Hey guys, Ace here with another music analysis video. Today I'll show you an analysis of the opening theme song to Game of Thrones. I know it's late in the season, but I was not aware that Game of Thrones started until the beginning of this month. They need a better marketing department. I probably spent more time making this video than watching season 7, but I'm going to go ahead and make this video anyways. The song uses violins and cellos, which is common in adventure type music. This makes sense because Game of Thrones is a series about the adventures of each of the main characters, the challenges they face, and how they die. The song has two basic sections, each lasting for eight measures. The song structure is AABB and has an introduction and ending as well. I'm gonna call this a motif. Uh, it uses two long notes and two shorter notes, and it's played twice in a phrase and four times in a section. In a phrase, the first pair of long beats are longer, which gives them more emphasis than the second pair of long beats, and that's how you know a phrase is starting. At the end of each phrase, you get a very long note of 12 beats. One ends in a D and one ends in a C. In harmonic terms, this is the dominant, this is the tonic. Uh, this is a very basic method of composition, and they are seen as opposites, where one wants to continue the piece and the other wants to end the section. The contours of eighth notes in section A are arranged in an invertible pattern. In the first group, you go up a second, up a second, while in the fourth group, you go down a second, down a second, instead of up. And this pattern can be seen with the second and third groups, where you go up a second, then down a third, while in the third group, you go down a second, up a third. And this is invertible, where 1 and 4 are pairs, and 2 and 3 are pairs. Because of this pairing, section 3 can be seen as a 2 prime, and section 4 can be seen as a 1 prime. So the structure of 8 notes can be seen as 1, 2, 2 prime, and 1 prime. The order in which they appear is retrograded, which means that this is the normal order, and this is the opposite order. 1, 2, 2, 1. This motif can be heard throughout the song. A fast version of the motif is introduced in the beginning, and you also find it played while the 12 beat note is being played, and you can also hear it in the background of section B as well. Moving on now, the second iteration of part A is exactly the same as the first, except it uses another cello played an octave higher. This creates more intensity in the song. And on the third time the melody is played, the violin is played an octave higher than the cello, and the intensity of the song is now it's at its peak because of the high notes the violin plays. Now this motif is played an octave higher in the first phrase and another octave higher in the second phrase of the third time the section A is played. There is a variation on the motif in the preceding measure because this is the last time you hear this motif in the melody. Section B of the song has the motif playing below it, so you never leave the established familiarity of the song. The melody is weird because it leaves by a melodic seventh twice, and melodic sevenths are dissonant to me, which bothers me if we don't explain it. So let's explain it. We can separate the high and the low notes of the melody and name them based on their scale degrees. So the high notes form a 1, 7, 5, 3, 4, 5, and the low notes are scale degrees 1 and 6. When you separate them out like this, they form nice melodic intervals. Seconds and thirds are nice melodic intervals. Sevenths are not. The melody is sort of using the, the low notes as a break between high notes so that you get a little variation, and variation is good. I like variation. The second time section B is played is exactly the same, except with a violin addition. In addition to the motif played two octaves higher than before at the end, to give the song a little more intensity. It's similar to the progression of section A. The end of the melody is played 3-4-5 here and 3-2-1 here. So it adds to the inverse relationship of the piece. Plus this one's dominant and this one's tonic. They are opposites. Now. There are lots of opposites, or conflicts as I like to call them, in this composition. Harmony, major, minor, contour inversions, retrograde, and high notes versus low notes. They all present conflicts. The opposite between rhythm and pitches is used to demonstrate the conflicts that each of the main characters face against each other in the show. I hope you get a chance to apply this analysis the next time you listen to the opening scene and say, Hey, Ace taught me that. Thanks for watching. I mean, thanks for watching my video, not Game of Thrones. If you want to chat about the music some more, or if you want to talk about Game of Thrones, leave me a comment or send me an email. I hope you enjoyed the video and I hope to hear from you.